Hello, and welcome to the Blue Monkey Forensics video series. In this video, we are going to unbox the WeebyTech USB 3.1 write blocker. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so I can regain control of my life. Whenever you are going to be handling original evidence, whether it is to image the evidence or to preview and triage the evidence, it is highly recommended that you use hardware write blocking. This is even if you're using software write blocking, because extra protection never hurts, right? And depending on the accreditation of your laboratory, it may be part of your standard operating procedure to use hardware write blockers. So for this video, we are going to look at the WeebyTech USB 3.1 write blocker. The cost is about $400, which is actually a great price for insurance against accidentally altering your evidence. The other common product out on the market is Tableau's Forensic USB 3.0 bridge, which is commonly known as the T8 series. Let's go ahead and unbox the WeebyTech USB 3.1 write blocker. The kit comes with the write blocker itself, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-A cable, the power adapter, the power adapter plug for the US socket, because I'm in the US. If you're in Europe, I believe you will get a quote unquote European socket. And it also comes with a pretty blue thumb drive with uh, software and drivers. And this part is a nice touch. This is a sticker that you stick to the power adapter so you can tell what it goes to. There's so many times that I have multiple power adapters in my search kit and I don't know what devices they go to. Also comes with a quick start guide. No real computer person reads these things, so let's just put that aside. I'm just kidding. These guys are actually very useful, so don't ignore them. Let's go ahead and open up the bag that contains the write blocker. So the first clue that this may not work on my Linux box is the blue sticker that asks you to run the driver loading program on the host machine. And the program ends in a .exe, which is a Windows executable. So not likely going to work on my Linux box. On the one side, the left side, we have the power plug. We have the validate button. And then the USB-C connector that goes to the host machine. On the top is an LED indicator, which we will go into more detail shortly. And on the right side are the two USB-C ports, which supports up to USB 3.1. And then a USB-A port, which supports up to USB 3.0. The first thing you will need to do before using this write blocker is to install the driver for Windows 10 or Windows 8.1. Of course, I did not pay attention to this when I got this product and just assumed that I can get it to work with Linux. Well, I could not get it working. Installing the software is very straightforward. Just plug in the blue thumb drive containing the driver and maneuver to the driver installation file folder then launch the cruwblocker-exe program. Once installed, to use the write blocker, connect it to your forensic workstation with either the USB-C or USB-A cable, both of them which come with the kit. Once connected, you will need to press the validate button on the left side of the box. The LED on top will change from red to amber to green which indicates that the device is now in write block mode. I would recommend that you do the validation without any media plugged into the right side of the box. The red LED indicates that the write blocker is not ready to be used. Amber is when it's trying to do the validation, and green is when the write blocking is active. The other software that's included on the blue thumb drive includes something called Forensic Software Utility. So this particular tool gives you a few options. 
you can look at the info for each drive. So I'm gonna rescan, and once it's done, it turns up with the information about our drive. So it gives you the sector count and the byte count, the make and model, and perhaps serial number if that's available, and then gives you the product, which is the write blocker. And then there's also a write blocker test included in this section. So if you want to hit start tests, it will go ahead and execute a sequence of commands that is going to attempt to write to that drive and then unmount it and then mount it back and then uh, verify that there is no changes on that. Then there is also HPA DCO. If you have a hard drive, I have a thumb drive in here, so that, that's not going to do anything. Gives you the firmware information about those devices as well. And then lastly, it gives you the uh, settings that you can change and a log of what you've done, which is pretty much the test. And then lastly, the forensic software utility about page itself, so you know what version this thing is. The second piece of software included is the write blocking validation software. So once we launch this piece of software, again, you can rescan the buses to get your device. And then once you've selected your particular device, you can hit the play button to initiate the test. In the big window in the middle, it basically tells you about what it's doing. So as you can tell, it's doing a whole bunch of low-level writes, these uh, direct memory access writes. And then once again, it uh, detaches the thumb drive and then reattaches it again and verifies. I'm guessing it's actually the same test as the other tool, but I'm not sure. And if you need to keep your test report for... Um, if your lab is accredited and you need to keep all the documentation of your annual validations, this is a HTML report that you can either print out or save digitally. So my summary for this product, let's start with the negatives. First off, the ports for the block devices were slightly too close together as I had uh, adapters which were a little too wide with the USB-A in the middle. Another drawback is that it only works on Windows uh, and you need to install drivers. And I have not done enough testing to see if these drivers would have any conflicts with any other programs, but um, it seems to work okay so far. So I tried to plug this into my Mac machine and disk utility did not see the drives that are behind the write blocker and the write blocker status light stays red so unfortunately i cannot get this to work with mac os i plug this into a linux machine running the cane distro and with ls block it did not see the drives behind the write blocker d message saw the write blocker itself and then the write blocker status light stayed red so again unfortunately I was not able to get this to work with my Linux machine. The one thing I did not like, but this is probably just a personal preference, is that the way that the writes function, it appears that you may be altering the evidence until you physically unplug the device and then plug it back in to verify that it did not alter the evidence. So if you're just um, you know, dragging and dropping, it looks like you, it allows you to do those actions. Other brands of write blockers I have used, there is something called a read-only declaration and a write error declaration uh, for their settings, dip switches, which makes it clear to the user that the device is read-only and not writable. Some positives. This write blocker is a relatively small form factor, and it is also relatively easy to operate as long as you have the driver loaded on your forensic machine and then you just hit the validate button, then it's just plug and play. You can connect up to three USB devices. A lot of other uh, write blockers only one device at a time, so this is actually quite nice. You get two USB-Cs and one USB-A. Right? The USB-Cs support 3.1 devices, which is theoretically twice as fast as the 3.0 devices. 
it may need power when you plug in all three devices. I experimented around and found that if you don't plug in a source media first, you can verify the right blocker without any external power. And I was able to power uh, SSDs, thumb drives, a, even a two and a half inch spindle drive without external power. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we took a look at the WeebyTech USB 3.1 right blocker. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.